Papa Bear and Dohe Relatives, Episode 2 from the Rematriation Station. I'm Vandy Crane, and this is my wonderful co host, Tatanka Skawi Swifted, Tata. And we are um, really grateful to have the opportunity to be doing this podcast, something um, that we talk about often with our different guests and someone actually a a director at one point when we were uh, in a documentary said wow I really wished I had recorded that conversation and it made a made us start thinking about recording conversations so that's the rematriation station conversations with other women um, other matriarchs grandmothers aunties doing powerful work in their communities um, to rematriate and decolonize. So um, the rematriation station is brought to you proudly by our sponsor, Recovery Organization Resources, Disrupting the Narrative of Addiction. Visit their website at www.recoveryorganization.com or check out their Facebook page a group to help people seek recovery houses. So just before we um, actually get to our conversation, which was recorded back on the Grand Conjunction, our, we're, we're very honored to have our guest uh, from the Lakota Nation, the uh, Mini Koju uh, Band in Greengrass, South Dakota, um, Martina Looking Horse. We had an amazing conversation live on Facebook where she prayed for the people on winter solstice on the day of the conjunction. It was a really powerful call, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it was a good one. Um, But just to uh, discuss exactly what rematriation is and and why we're doing this. Uh, So rematriation, it's it's an indigenous concept that refers to reclaiming ancestral remains, our spirituality, our culture, knowledge, and resources, instead of more patriarchally associated repatriation. It simply means getting back to Mother Earth, repairing our fractured relationship with the Earth, with other women, with the concept of the Mother, It's a return to our origins, a return to life and co-creation, and a reclamation of germination, rather than more patriarchal destruction and colonization. Social structures and values of rematriation include the broad view of interdependence of all beings, uh, egalitarianism, that all are equal, all of our relations, not just human relations, Uh, the concept of peace and balance, harmony, but also protection, gifting, the values of love, trust, compassion, respect, and forgiveness, and placing women and mothers at the center of society because when, when we know when Indigenous women and mothers are placed at the center of society, at least uh, traditional minded, I should say, women and mothers um, of indigenous origin, they, they're driving force in life is to make sure everybody has what they need. And then just some concepts for our European and European American allies. What does rematriation mean for you? Rematriation means banishing fear, owning your power and privilege, reclaiming, or excuse me, claiming your agency by creating awareness and dispelling stigma, skip, skipping the guilt and shame associated with colonization and colonial violence, Finding concrete ways instead to act as an ally instead of engaging in online arguments, but finding actual 
actions that you can do. And be aware of the space that you take up physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychically, and then do your best not to take up as much space. <clears throat> Rematriate your own ancestral knowledge and practices as women. We all are indigenous to somewhere. We all come from some tribe. Um, so if you can, reconnect to that. Mm. Rather than unwittingly causing more harm to indigenous communities by appropriating our cultures. Redistributing ill-gotten colonial patriarchal capital <clears throat> gains and examples being oil money, ranching money, lumber, coal, energy, etc. Never lose hope, keep faith, and change is not only possible, it is inevitable. And today's date is actually January 21st. So yesterday we saw the inauguration of uh, a new presidential term and uh, several women of color taking offices in which they've never had before in history. So that just goes to show that that change is not only possible, it's inevitable and change is not only on the way, it's here. So with that, uh, Tata, do you have anything you want to add before we cut over to the conversation we had with Martina? Um, no. No? How are you feeling about the, uh, the new woman of color, uh, vice president, <laughs> the new vice president being a woman of color? It's really hard to explain, <laughs> but either from that, I guess I'm feeling pretty good about it. Feeling pretty good? Can you want to, like, elaborate on that? Like, is there another word, like, you might want to add? Does it give you hope? Yeah, what kind of hope does it give you? What does it make you think? Compared to like what we've seen the last four years. Well, I do think that she's much better than the president. Our former president, luckily. Our former president, yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. I think she... Um, it's more like a responsible adult, at least in that aspect. And we'll see what this new presidential term brings. But um, we know from our prophecies and uh, just just how things are, that things aren't going to be easy. We're in a marathon race, so um, it's going to take community. We're not going to be saved by anybody. And we know this from experience and from what we know. So uh, with that, thank you, Tata, for your contribution. And we're going to cut over to our conversation with Martina Looking Horse. Um, and we're just very honored to have her as a guest on our show and to introduce her project, the Lakota Reparations Fund, which you can find at lakotareparationsfund.org. All right, so we're super honored to have a guest on today. Uh, she is probably the most knowledgeable woman that I am honored to know. We are honored in our family to call her Ina, mom, grandmother, when she, um, she is the matriarch of the 19th generation pipekeeper family of the Lakota, Nakota, and Dakota nations uh, from Greengrass, South Dakota, the Minikoju um, band of the Ochati Shakoi. Um, and before we turn it over to Martina, we wanted to open today's uh, conversation with a, a women's honor song um, that my partner John has agreed to help us with. Oh, 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 oh. 
so much for taking the time to join us today martina and to take the time to come on to pray for the people and share your experience and wisdom with us we're so honored to have you with us today well thank you for that beautiful song vandy and john that was an honor song for the women and the word said lakota we have um, courage um, the future generations depend on you and the people depend on you, have need of you. And so that's the translation anyway. But thank you so much. And I would like to open this uh, this meeting with a prayer for um, a world prayer to um, the main thing was the pandemic. We have so lost so much people to the pandemic. And it's really heartbreaking because every day we lose someone we love. And I uh, want to pray for world peace and for missing and murdered, for all the children, for the women, uh, the women to take courage and stand up for your people, and for all, all from Jimakat and Miniwichoni, you know, for all the relatives of this earth. So with that, I'd like to um, start this um, with the prayer. I would like to pray in my Lakota language because um, um, this happened a long time ago, but one of my dear friends that worked with NASA told me that they did a study on our prayers and our language, and they found out that when you pray in Lakota, then both um, the physical and the spiritual realm, they line up. And therefore you can like, uh, that veil is thin and you can uh, get power, you know, from the Lakota language, because it's so powerful. There's no cuss words in there or nothing, so. Um, then we don't have no devil, no sins. But I would like to start this prayer now before I get carried away. All right, I'm gonna take my glasses off and start the prayer in Lakota. Thank you so much, Mitakwepi. <laughs> The Makataka hit when I'm shooting up here. He chose a new wash again. Walk, Mosha, Mosper, Wang Lucky, Wash Ake, Wapia, Wasnia. Then I'm back to kill us as a watcher can cut up your car to cash lot. The Makataka hit when I'm shooting up now. That's a sign. Like was just a echoy up here. Lakushi took an achabius up here to cash the lamp at the key. The crown lamp at the key, ah, Dona, wasn't he picked on now? The text there, when you want to a cot a yap such a nush, wasn't he picked on um such a nush, gunt he picked up. The hunker to cash the lamp, a petuki, wasn't she to a wagtiki, after we try his new con to cash the Walk your love, no hair, in ocean capia to Kashla. You hunk out the what in it, one year was on when you cry, you cry. You know, you cry with you, you know. 
Well, the key we chose on you in the last year, I put your ear to crush the lamp with the key. No lamp with the key don't know chap such you can't to crush no stamina with chuck you back into a yet to crush. Don't know what you can, Nita Rabukham. You can wash the you can't to crush no. Nay, you walk and you wash the yet to crush no. Lamp with the key don't a cockish of such a you can. You can to crush no. We chose in a wash a cow chuck for you. You can't learn with the kid, no good, and Jim McCann, and when he was what's a good kick to help you, Panta Pasha, and no one who be at the Pasha, that is the hot tea top. The count, what kind of was just the Upi Panta Pasha, and no, was like a walk from one like a quick by the Pasha. The how Chakula took no manuka. No, I take a lamp to be a kid to Kashla. Which I knew I yet to Kashla. Etta to Kashla, Chagan as him now. honor to have you pray for us as on this special day um, very powerful um, like you said last night you had shared that uh, that post you had found on Facebook with me about the the woman on fire the burning woman that uh, so many women are on fire with a passion to um, not the let the world continue the way it's continuing to um, stand up for our future generations, for the health of our planet, for the health of our water, our land, and all of our relations, and uh, the next seven generations, which is 300 years. It's a long time to consider. Um, so with that, you know, this, this, whole, uh, this whole podcast is, is dedicated to the concept of uh, indigenous rematriation, reclaiming what was taken for us, no longer waiting for it to be given back. And uh, with that, you know, it's just an honor to have you on here to, to talk about your, um, your story, your story of rematriation and your vision of um, bringing resources and connection back to the people and uh, how we can support you with that. Um, so please go ahead and um, tell us, tell us more about yourself and um, where you come from and what you want us to know today and how we can support you. Uh-huh. I greet all of you with a warm handshake. And I want to let you know my, as you know, my Facebook name is Wawoki Onwia, which means helping woman. My grandma, Lucy Bad Warrior, gave me that name. And my English name is uh, Lois Martina Looking Horse. And I come from Greengrass, South Dakota. My parents are Stanley and Cecilia Looking Horse. And my uh, two grandmas, or my uh, dad's mom, her name was Lucy Bad Warrior uh, Looking Horse. Then her mom's name was Martha Bad Warrior. And her dad was um, uh, Elkett. But the story goes on with the 19th generation to take care of the calf pipe. And my uh, uncle chose Orville to be the keeper of the sacred calf pipe. Um, but the whole family is really the keepers of the sacred calf pipe because we've done it together as a family throughout the generations. And um, they, when they had the uh, battle at Little Bighorn, my grandma was there with the Chinupa, Macomb, Martha Redigo, but she came to the um, ravines at, uh, during the day they hid and at night they came to the ravines and they hid, but they made it to green grass and they said green grass was a power belt because if you stand in the middle of green grass where the cat pipe is, if you look to the east, there's a half a circle. And then if you look to the west, there's a half a circle. And in our traditions, we've always honored the women. The women are the backbone of the nation. And we're probably the only nation in the whole world that honors women on their time. And so we, um, because of this connection with the Mother Earth, when we call her Grandmother Earth, then 
we always have respect for the women. So in Greengrass, if you look to the southwest or to the north northwest, you'll see these hills. They're called Azepaha, which means tit hills in English. But in the Lakota way, because it's sacred, then it uh, refers, it's in reference to honor the women, um, these hills. So anyway, I just want to let you share that with you. So I'm from Greengrass, South Dakota, and that was an international place of worship. There's neutral ground. So people of all nations, all colors can come and worship there. And um, that's where the calf pipe resided at. Um, but anyway, I wanted to talk about you know, Rainbow Valley. Uh, that's in Snake Creek, South Dakota. That's 10 miles west of Mobridge, South Dakota. My family has land there, it's ancestral land. And way before the white men came, we had a um, huge battle there between the Lakotas, Cheyennes, Arapahoes, all their allies against the Kiowas and Pawnees, and I don't know who else was there, but we had a huge battle. And back in the day, some of those war chiefs had like 5,000, 6,000, even up to 15,000 warriors at their command. So you can imagine what a huge battle that was. And they said they fought for days and um, they fought so hard that there's a creek there, they call it Snake Creek. That ran red with blood and the colors of the blood was rainbow colors. That's why they called it Rainbow Valley. But we can't prove that in history because that happened before the white man came. But th there's a lot of ancestral spirits there and uh, nobody won in that battle even though they fought for days. So they called the truth and went home with the um, wounded and their, the ones that gone on, the spiritual world. So anyway, I want to build their um, place where youth can come, or pr probably everybody or anybody can come and learn about the culture, the language, and the songs. I want it to be an echo village, self-sustaining echo village, uh, and have Inipis there and teach the right way to um, sing the sun dance songs, the vision quest songs, even the traditional songs, because most of our powwows today are with um, uh, what I call popcorn songs. They're just straight songs and have no meaning. But in the Lakota traditional songs, some of those songs go back way before the coming of the white men. And our people carried these songs throughout the generations. This is oral history. And we're losing all this really fast. And I really feel that there's a spiritual hunger for from everybody, not just children and kids, but from adults also. They want to learn these ways. They want to learn about the proper protocol, the etiquette. And that's really good, you know, that um, people want to learn no matter what degree of blood they are. I had a hard time with that, but I've accepted it, that we are the rainbow colors that are going to save the Mother Earth. And I truly believe that. And I really truly believe that women have the power to do this, to change the world. And because of this um, burning women, um, they have that fire inside of them, that passion that can no longer be uh, keep quiet. It needs to come out because of the future generations. They're the only ones that have that empathy, that compassion, I think, to like um, actually care about the future generations care about their children and their grandchildren and do something about it. So that's why I, I say this, you know, that I really feel for all the women out there that are trying so hard to help our people, no matter what blood degree they are, you know, there's so much grandmothers out there. And um, uh, before the Washitu came, we had a matriarchal society it was our grandmothers that raised all these children and their grandchildren, and they knew each of them by heart. And so that when they grew up, then they could tell which one's going to make a good leader, which one's going to be honest, have integrity. And they were the ones that chose the leaders. And before the white man came, we had um, a hierarchy. And the highest form of um, the nation was the four kings. And these were the ones, our leaders all picked all the grandmas, the grandmas picked all the leaders. Excuse me, I'm getting nervous. But they picked the leaders and um, 
the highest were the Uchasha Yatapikas. They were the kings. There was four kings that the grandmothers picked and they ruled the nation. And that's the, our hierarchy. And below them was the Nachas and below them was the chiefs. And below them was the Uchasha uh, Oglesha, Oglesha, you know, judges and down like that, you know. But the uh, Uchasha Yatapikas were the highest, you know, there was four kings we had. And um, the grandmothers picked us. We had a matriarchal society and we were really strong. And the matriarchal society, we were the queens of each household. Everybody was a queen. All the women, they were a matriarch in their household. That's Yospaye, that's Hiwahe, the Ospaye. You know, they, they knew every each and every one of their children and grandchildren. And they knew how to uh, take care of business and... Um, make sure the camp went smoothly. And um, they were also the property owners. They owned everything in that teepee. So we are the property owners of this country. We own these lands, us, the matriarchs of the Lakota, Dakota, Nakota nations. We are the matriarchs. We are the queens here in this country, just like the queen of England is over there. You know, We are the queens here. And not only here, but in Unchimachla, in Canada, that's where uh, this, and um, down to Mexico, South America, all this turtle island, all these women are queens, they're matriarchs. They need to be heard today in this day and age. They need to be understood that this, this madness needs to stop. The greed, the lies, the perpetual genocide that's happening to our people. These, we need to make the world understand that we're the true landowners of this country, this homelands, these are our lands. They abrogated our property rights and took everything away from us. Our livelihood, the Buffalo, the Buffalo Nation. And I wanted to thank all the uh, prayer warriors out there. To me, they're like the Buffalo, you know, the Buffalo stand out there, outward and the women and the inside, they guard the women and the inside in the center. And this is how the Buffalo are. Those are our brothers. They teach us the ways. So to us, to me, prayer, prayer warriors and women, you know, they're guarding right now. They're not outside with the vulnerable and the sick and the children and the inside. And that's how I see things. And um, there's a ceremony that goes to that too. And there's a medicine man that taught us the ceremony. It's the Buffalo ceremony where he passed away this year. And I want to send condolences to his family. Um, but anyway, um, I want to do the ceremony maybe sometimes in green grass next year if this pandemic ends. And so um, we all need to pray for this pandemic to end. It can end as quickly as it started. But, um, you know, uh, we, it, there's a lesson to be learned in everything. And um, right now we are all grieving, most of us. And because um, we lost loved ones to this COVID. And there's, many of us are dealing with family members that have it. And it's really, really sad and heartbreaking. And every day we worry that we don't want to lose any more loved ones. And um, I just wanted to say that. And then um, I need uh, support for my Rainbow Valley project. I need help with uh, money to build out there for the youth. I've lived on the reservations. I've had to do a lot of children call me mom and Uchi on the reservations. And I've had to deal with a lot of um, troubled teens over the years. Um, and I understand, you know, um, what they are, they're going through, the suicides, the attempted suicides, the cuttings, and, you know, having no food in the house. Having alcoholic parents or meth parents that don't want to buy food for the kids, you know, and th these kids are out there and they need help, you know, they need help to um, eat every day, even to learn how to pray, to even go to school, have the encouragement and the support to go to school. And it's not much I can do as a grandma, but I wanted to have this youth ranch and teach children how to and talk the language and sing these songs because this is our culture. These are our ways and they're getting lost. You know, the meth epidemic is really, really bad. 
and I sure appreciate all the people out there fighting the meth epidemic with everything they have, you know? Um, there's so much people, it's just so overwhelming. And one thing they don't tell about is on the meth epidemic is some of that meth is bad and it will explode to your heart. And there's a lot of statistics to that on the reservations, but they're not letting people know about that, that this um, is going on with ep ep meth epidemic that there's um, some of it's bad. They mix it some kind of way and it um, takes people out. I know people that have died like that. It explodes with their heart. People that are close to me. And I never thought, excuse me, some of the people that died were doing that. They hide it so well. They, I, Because I tell people, you know, if you're going to do mess, stay away from me. You know, don't be part of my world. Just stay way over there, you know. And I always tell people that, you know, that's bad for you. Like, you know, tell the chemicals that's all in there. Battery acid, you know, on and on. And um, I try to explain to them, but they lie to me. They're always telling me, oh, I don't do that anymore. I quit. But it's like um, you find out later they did it or they died, you know, because their heart exploded. <laughs> so anyway, that's how that is. It's almost as though the uh, drug epidemics in this country are, are destruct destruction by design. As as the you you mentioned genocide before, as though it's a part of the continued genocide in communities of color and uh, rural communities. Even um, I really believe that. Sorry, but the cops are enabling that because look, there's lockdowns. People aren't supposed to go anywhere, but somehow the meth and the heroin now are really rampant on the reservations. How do they get in? But they don't check those white people on the reservations either. We have that double standard there as it is where the tribal cops, BIA cops have no jurisdiction over white people. They can do what they want. And they're the ones that can get a hold of this androus hydroxide. Uh, you have to order it and only far farmers and ranchers can get that stuff to make the, it's called fertilizer. And, uh, that's what they use in meth nature to want to escape pain and suffering and that's exactly what intergenerational trauma is is an, a seemingly in a, inescapable system of pain and suffering and that there's very limited options to my knowledge on the reservations um, for uh, wellness support or uh, even cannabis uh, medical cannabis intervention I, I think those those legislations are starting to change. So maybe there'll be better alternatives uh, that people can reach for as opposed to meth and alcohol to self-medicate trauma. Um, but it's it's uh, it just seems like those drugs, like you said, are being pushed into those communities because we know the function of trauma is to try to escape pain. And if that's all there is to turn to, that's what people are gonna turn to. And that just continues to fuel the um, the genocide, as you mentioned. So what what your vision is is the exact antecedent or or solution to to all these layers of um, social issues on the reservation. I would say, um, coming from a matriarchal um, perspective, wanting everybody to have what they need and wanting to preserve the culture. Um, do you, do you want to uh, tell us a little bit more about the the bigger vision, you you mentioned Rainbow Valley and building on your land. Is there plans to expand or are you partnering with any other um, organizations on different reservations? Uh, yes, um, I would like to uh, expand to other reservations and uh, like Jenny said, to mostly um, to all the communities if possible. But we would like to expand to Pine Ridge for the time being and maybe later on Rosebud in Lower Brewer and Shine River. But right now, uh, the next um, project would probably expand into Pine Ridge and Wound and Knee, Manderson area. Uh, Dorothy and Leola, they have land there and they're willing to help, you know, with whatever is necessary to um, do something for the youth also. And I appreciate that of them, that they, there's, there's a lot of women that really wanna do something for the youth. There's just no agenda or, um, plan or anything we as a Lakota nation we want to be unified but even that uh, to me this was a, a start of rebuilding our Lakota nation to teach the youth about oral history and um, language and the songs and um, 
I wanted to say that when my parents were alive, they did this, you know, they, they did everything to help the people. It's like a constant 24 seven cultural camp going on at their house. You know, there's so much people there. The grass never grew outside. It was always dirt, you know, just dirt. Cause uh, children played out there. You hear children playing all the time. And it was always so much fun, you know, so happy to hear the children laughing and uh, running around out there in the country. And um, my parents, you know, they went in a hole uh, helping the people. They went in a hole. There's two grocery stores in town. They credited it. There's like, their grocery bill was like over, always over $500, $700 from feeding the people. And then there was um, two um, hardware stores and they were always in the hole there too, buying axes and shovels, what, what they needed for the ceremonies and the sun dance, uh, the sweat lodges they had. And, um, then they also built houses around there to, um, and brought in trailer houses to, so people have a place to stay, like bunk houses. And some people came and stayed for a long time because a lot of them were really traumatized. And my parents helped them through their grief and suffering, whatever trauma, what was going on. And our people never had trauma before, before the white man came. Um, the boarding schools and mission schools that they were sent to, Cause all this, the cycle of abuse, you know, and um, drinking and all that, because these boarding schools and mission schools, they, they um, were supposed to take the savage out of the Indian and make them um, civilized. So those priests and nuns, they um, severely beat our, child, our children that were taken away from their families and um, physically and sexually assaulted and what scared what was scary the most was you know um, before those children even went there they had huge old warehouses full of um, coffins so to me that was premeditated murder that they were to harm our children and many weren't gonna go home and it was years and years of that genocide and homicide on these reservations and boarding schools, mission schools. And when they came back, they taught the people that had to sexually and abuse children and rape children, drink to forget the pain. And that cycle never stopped. And we need to stop that cycle of abuse. We need to stop the men from hitting the women because we never had that. Our warriors always had the utmost respect for their mothers, their aunties, their grandmas. And we were all related and everybody was happy and healthy. And now we don't have that because of what the priests and nuns did to our people and started this vicious cycle of abuse. And we need to protect our children and defend them today now more than ever because our people, they're, they're almost extinct. And with this COVID, most of them are almost gone, you know? So we all need to cherish each other and help each other, and love each other, pray together and pray for help from the great spirit that he would help us. I really believe the prayers work. I've seen miracles all my life. And I really truly believe that your prayers will help us, our, our, our future generations, our, our Mother Earth, Grandmother Earth, everything that we are all connected. Therefore, we should all only give out good light and, and love and much hugs. But I, I wanted to, you know, if there's anything else you want me to answer. Um. I had a question and it went running down the hall. Um, let's see here. So just to recap what you said, if if anybody wants to find out more about your your program at Rainbow Valley, uh, the website's still being developed, but there is a website up for Martina's program. It's called Lakota Reparations Fund.org. Um, if 
I believe there's a contact button on the website. Uh, some links might not be working yet. Like I said, everything's getting um, worked out on the website. It's a new website. Uh, the organization is not yet a 501c3. It is a grassroots organization uh, partnered with the Rise and Love Foundation um, and some other community organizations uh, in different communities. Um, we do have a nonprofit 501c3 recipient set up to receive funds for the project. Um, so if anyone is interested in connecting with um, Martina Looking Horse in supporting the development of Rainbow Valley, uh, an eco village cultural preservation site um, with the main priority of creating safety culture for children on the reservations uh, where they have a safe place to come and get food and learn about the culture and, um, and learn the language and the songs and most importantly to be safe uh, because that's that's what we need to create. That's what was taken away from us by colonialism, colonial violence, racial violence, and now spiritual abuse is rampant. Um, I often say in conversations with other indigenous women, our men and our ceremonies have been weaponized against us. So it's time that we make a stand to make our ceremonies safe for our children again, because that's, that's life or death for them. Uh, it really hurts my heart to see so many privileged um, non-native circles enjoying the ceremonies as a spiritual experience while our children die as a result of not having their ceremonies. So these things need to need to be brought into the light and put back the way they need to. Um, I, I know a lot of people are familiar with the land back 2020 hashtag. It's much more than just land coming back to us. It's our bundles coming back to us. It's our values coming back to us. It's our children coming back to us. It's our family values coming back to us. It's our families coming back to us after so much uh, divide and um, so much harm done by systems of colonialism. But we can't wait for those things to be given back to us. We have to take them back. It's, it's never the oppressor that decides to stop oppressing. Um, so if you are interested in contacting Martina, you can reach her through the website. If you have any issues with the Lakota Reparations Fund website, you can always contact us through the Rise and Love Foundation.org website. Uh, Martina does serve uh, on our advisory board as our el elder consultant. Um, and you, you had also mentioned there is a, a cultural doing that has been the intention of yourself and the, the um, traditional elders of the Ochati Shakoe to um, put on a, um, a gathering. I, I believe you mentioned the Buffalo ceremony or Buffalo dance. Yes. And, um, and also recognition of Kasawi and yes. uh, bringing the people together for a, a, a Wopila and uh, yes. once we make it through. So if, if anyone is, also interested in in supporting that um, gathering financially there's an opportunity to be of service in that way um, this program we're launching it today publicly we've been talking about it since standing rock essentially um, i know you have a lot of community support up there you have some volunteers that are just ready to come out and build when the time is right and you have the funding to build so today we're launching uh, a fundraiser for your program with the goal of raising, uh, we, we discussed a much smaller number in our, our meeting and Jenny Big Crow, you know, said she was able to go through that amount in a one day event alone. So since this is a launch project and you need uh, passenger vans and you need horses and you need building materials and you need money to feed the volunteers and transportation costs and all these things, um, hookups for electricity and water on the land. Um, we are launching this uh, fundraising goal with the goal of raising $210,000 for an initial startup for uh, the Lakota Reparations Fund organization. Again, it's grassroots, but there is a nonprofit recipient uh, that we're partnered with in Los Angeles that can receive not just cash 
donations for us, but in-kind donations. So if there's anybody out there um, with nonprofit programs that are dissolving and you have passenger vans and you need to do donate those to another nonprofit, we're able to accept those in-kind donations, um, horses, building materials, anything that you think uh, may contribute in a meaningful way to um, this elder's vision. It's a very beautiful vision. She has much support in her community. So um, again, you can reach out through either one of those websites. Um, was there anything that I missed, Martina? Um, this, we called it the Lakota Reparations Fund because uh, most of the time we, as women, we always help other people in crisis. So it's just always ongoing, you know, somebody's without food or without pampers. So we need a kind of a slush fund to help people to cover these costs. And um, I wanted to help with the soup kitchen and food pantry kind of place too, so that there's gonna be food. Cause the, the you'd be surprised, you know, what how people live on the res. I've been to homes where you open the cupboards and the refrigerators, there's nothing to eat, you know? And it's really sad. So. I know how that goes back on the reservations. I feel for my people. I know what they're going through, what they're suffering. And I pray for them all the time. And I think about them all the time, ways to help them out, you know? So this is ongoing. It's not like I just thought about this yesterday. It's been ongoing all my life, practically. Watching my parents help people. And to me, they were good, positive role models because they had nothing but love and love to give to the people and knowledge and they took that with them but i want to be part of that to help my people like that how my parents were they were like a legacy to us a legacy of love and i want to give that too back to the people too because that is what the summary is all about the virtues to love to have natural and spiritual laws that will help you and guide you so that you become a perfect human being, that you can care for people with compassion and to be recognized when the time comes, you meet the creator, that you have done th these things, these spiritual things, giving from the heart, love and honoring other people, having respect. These are what makes your light shine within and outside, like a big, happy, glowing bubble walking around, <laughs> an aura. But anyway, I want that for all people to have that happy, glowing bubble around them, to, to lift lightly into the next world when the time comes. I wanna hold them in the light. So with that, I'd like to thank you for having me on your podcast so much for uh oh i'm just in tears over here um i was told by an elder that the four medicines that we carry as women throughout our lives are water food our laughter and our tears and that our tears are the most powerful so thank you for sharing your medicine with us today and your knowledge and your vision and your passion for the people um the Rise and Love Foundation and myself, we've uh, always promised to support you in elevating your voice and your vision and getting it out to the people, uh, so the people can live because you Thank walk you. that Walakota path and uh, we're honored to support you. And we just pray that we can draw in all that support to make this vision a reality for all the children uh, so that there will be a better tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nila Wopula Tonko. These are happy tears of joy. <laughs> <laughs> happy tears of uh, a, be a better future of hope. And uh, just before we, uh, before we let the show go today, I just wanted to thank our sponsor. I haven't been able to figure out the equipment yet. Um, I did have the equipment for today's show, but for some reason we weren't getting audio. Uh, so I wanted to thank our sponsor, Recovery Organization Resources um, over on the East Coast in New York, New Jersey area. 
wanted to mention the Rise and Love Foundation website and the new book I have coming out, My Body, My Soul, One Woman's Journey to Reclaim Both, um, the first personal memoir in a three-part series. Um, so I'm really just excited to finally get to share that with everyone after a very long journey of creating the story. Um, so with that, thank you all so much for joining us on this very potent, powerful winter solstice, the great conjunction, where uh, the next three years really matter. The next three years are going to set the path for us for the next 20 years. So let's really open our hearts, put our minds together and come up with a better future for the children together because together we can make that a possibility. Um, thank you so much for oh, yeah. giving us your time today, Martina. And we look forward to having you on the podcast again. And we look forward to continuing to work with you and pray with you and make this vision a reality. Lila Plumax. Uh-huh. You want me to have an ending prayer before I go? Yes, that would be amazing. Okay. Let's just have a little short prayer before we go and we pray for um that feels very uh, good. For everybody again. Uh let's just now, what the key not going to touch the to take the was on such a car. You can walk you with Chuck Oye. Now, there, Donna, what the Oma Cabana would live up like Chichapi. The nature would chosen the wash a cash which I had to Kasla. Now, Taku out to the session now in Michi to your Piet and Kasla. Then put to keep Taku Shichak and I had you seen her. But station like I take my cock at the Oti Tapi. Oh, Mitako Asi. Thank you. Thank you again so much for joining us and for your prayers and allowing the earth to speak to us through you. I was told that whenever we get to hear an elder speak in their native tongue in their homeland, it's the earth speaking to us through them. So thank you for that gift and that honor today on this very special day and blessing us with that. Um, thank, thank you. <laughs> and thank you to all the listeners and the viewers, and I sure appreciate your support. Mitakwasi. Uh, Till next time. Ah, Toksha. That was a very powerful live show. Again, we we're very honored to have. Martina Looking Horse with us uh, for that special day on Winter Solstice, uh, the Grand Conjunction. Um, we're going to have Martina back on the show soon to talk more about her project, the Lakota Reparations Fund. Uh, it's, I guess, the best way to describe it is part of uh, the Land Back Movement, as we know or as you may not yet know, the land back movement is about more than just getting the land back. It's about calling back values and bundles and families and everything that we lost uh, that we need to restore as a people to have a, a balanced wellness. Um, so you can learn more about her project in the meantime. There's a, a website up. Um, we're still working on it, but it's lakotareparationsfund.org. Uh, you can donate on that project. Um, there is a, an event that um, we've been mm, coordinating on, a traditional doing that we've been coordinating on for a few years now. Um, it's going to be taking place this summer. We'll have more information about that, uh, but you can go to that website to find out more 
Again, that's um, Lakota Reparations Fund.org. You can donate on that, that website. There's a link to donate. Uh, the donations are tax deductible. Um, the project doesn't have a fiscal sponsor yet, but they do have a nonprofit recipient. Um, so they're, they're, it is tax deductible. Now, if you'd like to d gift directly uh, to that Lakota elder, Martina Looking Horse, uh, you can gift to her on PayPal at Lois Martina or on Venmo at Lois Dash Looking Horse Dash One. We have some other very exciting projects. The Rise and Love Foundation. So the Lakota Reparations Fund is a sister project with the Rise and Love Foundation. The Rise and Love Foundation's mission is to support individuals, families, communities, and companies in making the shift to rematriation, essentially, healing the collective and individual mother wounds. And we, one of the ways we do that is by supporting other women in their communities that have grassroots projects that they're doing or visions that they have, dreams that they have, and supporting them and getting the resources to be able to make those dreams a reality. Uh, so in addition to that project that we're working on, we also have our own Chakpa Hokshi Rematriation Center. Tata, do you want to tell our listeners anything about our rematriation center, what we got to do this past year? I think it's only a one, a one liner. <clears throat> I don't really explain things that well. So I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, how about I, is it okay if I ask you a couple questions about what we did? All right. Um, what did you? What was your favorite thing about the summer? Um, between the gardening and uh, getting to go to the river or fishing or uh, camping or traveling for um, to support cultural doings. Um, with uh, elders up north, what would you say was your favorite part of that? Or making medicines, that was something else we did too. I forgot to throw that in there. I guess traveling. Traveling. So your favorite aspect is traveling, so seeing, seeing relatives and supporting ceremonies and singing and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorites too. So we get to do a lot of... Um, a lot of things that we're grateful to get to do um, in the process of supporting communities and families. Uh, so the Chakpa Hokshi Rematriation Center, we've been hosting individuals and families at um, a nine acre property along the Pecos River here on in the ancestral territory of the Pecos Pueblo and Hickory Apache peoples. <clears throat> and um, let's see, we've been doing that for almost two years now. Uh, the space is a place where women can heal. Uh, it, it's a space for Indigenous women by Indigenous women, but it's also an inclusive space um, that is a space where family members and um, safe men and allies are able to come and share the space. Um, we do several different things uh, besides just giving a safe space to, um, we prioritize giving space to indigenous women who uh, are on the front lines or are um, just have been under an incredible amount of stress and would benefit from a retreat. But I think that's really all of us. So that's why we want to help women set up their own uh, spaces in their communities, safe spaces, whether they call them rematriation centers or resource centers, cultural resource centers. 
Um, our dream has always been to help other women set up those spaces. Um, so we have that going on. We have several guests scheduled to be um, coming to the rematriation throughout the rest of 2021. Uh, we're pretty much booked out through the summer. Uh, we are also looking at relocating the rematriation center and expanding. We recently found a property that's much larger that has several dwellings on the property and would accommodate uh, our needs much more. Uh, so we're working with some potential donors to get moved over to that, that other property. So we're really excited about that potential uh, and expanding. The other exciting thing uh, that I almost meant, almost forgot to mention, and I do that all the time, uh, I am not very good at marketing myself. Uh, I've always valued being humble and expressing humility, but this is um, a project that I worked for, I would say about 20 years on. Um, so I'm really grateful and honored to be able to offer it to the world. It's my first book, first in a series of three personal memoirs, My Body, My Soul, One Woman's Journey to Reclaim Both, uh, written by myself, Vandy Crane. Um, and it's basically my story of survival and how I was able to um, find a path of healing and create a foundation of healing for myself and, and um, a foundation that was so solid that I could share that healing with others. And it was definitely through my own process of rematriation, connecting with my ancestors, connecting with my culture, having indigenous family take me in, um, especially my Lakota family sharing their culture and their ways with me so that I could um, heal and reconnect with my own blood memory. So that's um, basically what this story is about, um, escaping trafficking as a child, as a teen, and uh, going through unimaginable circumstances and somehow beating all the odds to bring you my story and um, just a, uh, spoiler alert, it's a happy ending. So, um, again, it's the first in the series of three. It's available on Amazon. I'm not a big person really purchasing on Amazon. I try to avoid purchasing on Amazon. So I totally understand if you don't want to buy from Amazon, it's available at many other book distributors, um, Books A Million, Abe Books, Barnes and Noble, um, a friend told me she was even able to find it at a bookstore in Santa Cruz, California. So it's getting out there. It's available. We're also doing a giveaway for Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Um, go to my Facebook page. It's my author page, Vandy Crane. Uh, and actually, I believe it's uh, facebook.com forward slash the Vandy Crane, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and we're, like I said, doing a giveaway. We're all going to pick a number between 1 and 100, and we're going to draw three numbers. Um, or Tata's going to pick a number, John's going to pick a number, and I'm going to pick a number. If there's duplicate um, people that pick numbers, then we're going to have a drawing. Um, so all you have to do to qualify for that is go to that Facebook page, like, and share the video where I'm promoting the book and you'll have a chance to win a book. Um, I would also, um, I haven't done it yet, but I am going to put up a fundraiser on the website um, so that you can donate, so that we can get these books out to every single indigenous survivor out there free of cost. Um, I feel like it's really imperative to empower uh, our sisters. And that's, what re that's a part of what re rematriation is all about. So I want to get this book um, for free to my indigenous sister survivors. And um, yeah, I'll be putting a fundraiser up for that. So you can order the book on all those websites I just mentioned. And you can learn more about all of our projects at www.riseandlovefoundation.org. Mm. I think that's everything that we have for you on this episode.
Tata, was there anything else you wanted to add before we... All right. Well, thank you for joining us and stay tuned for episode three on the rematriation station. Be well, stay safe, take care of your elders, check in on your friends and um, keep hope.